I am Jeffrey Villardouin in the Difling campaign from Thrones of Britannia on Legendary Difficulty. We are in episode 7. We just need one more episode and we'll finish this campaign. We are moving on to the autumn of 886. This is the area of Northern Ireland in the Irish uh, Straits up north of the Irish Sea. And the faction we're going to attack is this faction on the left called Ulaid. Ready, oarsmen! Our oarsmen are getting ready. Here's our king off the coast of Difling. War has been declared. It looks like between Dubguy and Eilic. We'll see this through. And here's Zigfrodo. He is in Nass and he's facing a problem. And he may have to disband a unit because it looks like uh, our food situation is now critical. We are at minus five with food. So we have no option but to disband one of these units that took us so long to train. That's a little bit annoying. We spent money to recruit them. We waited for so many game turns to be fully trained. But we have to disband one of them. I will disband this PM in here. It's the weakest unit. Although they're good for protecting the flanks. We serve to the end! But we're in a settlement, so we don't need to protect flanks. So, uh, here is Ivar, our king's son. He will march on towards Linz. March on! Our foe shall fall! Here's Finkel, our king's nephew. Ships at your command. And Bardo. Bardo is only a three star general, so the other two generals are better than Bardo. That's interesting in terms of command. But he has other traits that make him a better commander. Most importantly, he has 50% um, upkeep um, discount for his army. That's a huge bonus. So otherwise you wouldn't be able to up, uh, keep to keep up this 20 units. You would be able only to have 10 units. Can you imagine? Enemy blood will flow. Yes, enemy blood will flow. Yes, yes, yes. So here is Finkel. Plus 10% campaign movement range because of his quartermaster. Those are the traits. We pledge our service. Here is Iva. He has uh, plus 5% charge for all units, plus 5% campaign movement range, plus 2% unit replacement, replenishment, malice kill, unit morale bonuses, and ship health, very interestingly. And here's our king, Bardo, and you can see the massive amount of bonuses he has. Minus 50% upkeep cost for all units, so he can keep up twice as many units at the same price. So, minus 10% campaign movement range because of his quartermaster, minus uh, plus 5%, plus 5 supplies, plus 5 melee scale, minus 5% recruitment cost, and so on and so forth. So, he is clearly our best commander. And the food situation slightly positive now, the balance is positive. Here are some other factions up north, uh, we don't have, we need to scout up in that area, so we're going to don't have a very good uh, you know, knowledge of those areas. But we've encountered a faction called Dubgale, I think we've encountered them via mid. And they are at war with Ilek, possibly they are at war with Mid as well. You can see it's that red faction 
on the uh, north western corner and uh, Do not waste they are not being liked by anyone okay so we offer them a declaration of friendship proposal is sufficient even though they're on red i wonder what that means they are they're afraid of us or oh, they're in serious trouble already so still in the autumn of 886 we're heading north slowly we're stacking us already six months to sail up the coast of Ireland well we're not even halfway up the coast of Ireland well we're about halfway up so we can improve the cattle pens here or we can improve the priory that will give us extra public order and plus 74 income from the church from selling various Christian things, various religious trinkets, candles, whatever, donations, voluntary donations. We go for improving the cattle pens, although it will take us another eight game turns, two full years before we have the advantage of that. You know, one thing about um, Christianity is that, you know, in our current systems, which share the same philosophy, Christian philosophy, as our forefathers, um, social services are funded by the state and paid by taxes. Our forefathers had social services paid by the church out of donations, so they were free. We never really realized that. So, our uh, royal there uh, Finkel is going to scout ahead. There was a single uh, you uh, whatever that, a single enemy fleet at sea earlier on. It was a small fleet, but potentially troublesome. And we need someone to scout ahead to see if they have fleets or armies. So we are at 50 out of 50 for an expedition. So soon an expedition will be launched. Rongelwald has gained a trait. So we're going to give him a priest. He's gained a follower. He's going, he's going to get a priest that will improve public order. And Ivar will move on to Linz. And from there he can take to sea. We're about to dock. The sea awaits. Yeah, he sailed past Carlin and seems Carlin is undefended. Our king is going to go forward as well. Advance the long ships. Head for the horizon. Advance the long ships. Advance the long ships. So if an enemy fleet appears. They will attack our king, although now we have Finkel at the front, so they'll probably attack Finkel, so he's a bit exposed. So Abbey Church, let's improve the church situation. They'll, go, they'll give us, as I said, a little bit of income from the church, and it will improve public order. Here's the Isle of Man. And Finkel is setting up the coast of Northern Ireland, where the Ulite faction is uh, located. So, uh, military tech, uh, we're going to get the trained fighters or the trained spearmen. Each of them will give us an improved unit. 
either an axe unit or a spear unit. Both would be good. Trained fighters will improve one of the spear units. I expect he might improve those long axemen. Alternatively, you can go for a civic technology. Uh, this building here will get us plus 25% reinforcement range. That's great. So we'll go for that. We're going to need that during our campaign to be able to reinforce each other at range. And so we take no attrition as we sail up the coast in winter, being Viking Sea Kings. And we're off to the spring of 886. Expedition! We can say north, east, southeast, or south. We can all go west. We'll find America if we go west. If you go north, we might find Iceland if it wasn't discovered already by this time. We might find the Orkneys or Shetlands, although I think they were already colonized by the Vikings at this time. We may find Greenland. Long ships, aye. Long ships, aye. The fleet stands ready. The fleet stands ready. He's a little bit exposed out there, but there are no enemy fleets on sight, there are also no enemy armies on sight. In sight. So uh, I think we can move him a little bit further forward. It's risky because he is not supported by anyone. If he gets attacked, he has no one to support him. Head for the horizon! Head for the horizon, exactly, exactly that. And there's nobody, there's nobody out at sea, there's nobody in the settlements, nobody we can spot. I think we're safe down here, we can declare war. And Ivar can take Carlin, which is undefended, so let's declare war. You've fitted off more than you can chew. The king of Eulide is not pleased. War declared, yes. So, Ivo will attack Carolyn from the sea. He'll land and take it. It's undefended. Not from the sea, please. This is so complicated. We will. And our king can attack, hopefully, Dune Patrick. Massacre them. Massacre them, yes. And we can attack the harbor. We don't have to lay siege because we are Vikings. I mean, anyone can do this, I guess. So I don't know what the walls are. Harbors are full because we can attack from the sea. We have massive superiority, and we capture Dune Patrick. Rely on us. Rely on us. Yes, 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 yes. I rely on you. So we're taking two more settlements and my feeling is we need just two more harbors or one one or two possibly harbors more harbors two more ports and we've won this campaign glory awaits the sea awaits or vikings the sea is a portent of glory. We will bring you glory. Yes, 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 glory. 
We pledge your service. That's good. So we can repair some of those buildings. We have money. And uh, they'll be functional in a game turn. And this is important. Uh, the fishing wharf. Because that will give us food. Let's see what else we can spend money on. It doesn't look like there's any armies out here. The fleet stands ready. And that was the end of the spring of uh, 886. We'll go for the summer, and unfortunately, Eli has mastered the fleet. It's mostly recruits. But nonetheless, they wasted no time to attack Finkel. They take him to sea. It's good and bad. Um, hopefully, we can escape. Hopefully, they don't have enough movement. Abandon the field. No, they do. They had enough movement. They caught up with us. And so, Finkel is not going to survive this battle. I don't think so. We outnumbered something like seven to one. No hope. Oh, so sad. A four star general. Well, the good thing about this is that their army is now at sea. That means they cannot retrain themselves so become fully recruited cannot they can all also recruit new units and so the only army probably they had is now incapacitated at sea I guess that's a price to pay for that and Dubgale has been destroyed as a faction by Ilek, I guess. Blood Eagles, the army of Finkel, and Finkel himself, have perished. A mission has been issued to capture and hold all ports in Ireland. That will give him material for a few more years of uh, Diefling campaign video clips. If I were to complete that mission. Our foes will suffer. So here's Ivar. He is. And Carlin. Our can rely on us. king is in Dean Patrick with practically all of our army. So he needs to retrain a couple of units so in slightly there were lots of few men during the um, battle, so I'm going to recruit not the lesser, I'm going to recruit this guy, Goderodder, who has that amazing skill, plus 10 to all melee units, a double axe thing. Eager for war. He's eager for war. He's not a great general, he's only got one star. That's a bad thing. So what we're going to do at the moment is, uh, what we're going to do now is give him the units that need retraining, um, for example that one. And maybe give him the lighter units, so there's missile units, no heavy units, maybe just the light ones. Give him the lighter units and leave him in this uh, town, Don Patrick within reinforcement range, and then we can take our better units under the king and move up north. Because we need an army to improve public order in Dune Patrick, but we want to push also with our conquest. And so I guess we have to divide our army. So we're giving those uh, relatively lighter units, also one or two of them need retraining. We'll give these to the new general, Godrodder. Show us the fall. And our king will campaign northward because 
I have the feeling now that the only field army that the enemy faction has is at sea. So we can take the settlement Moig Bile and God Rodder, who leads the terror from the sea. We'll go into Dune Patrick. So we can now uh, maintain, slightly maintain public order during Patrick. At the same time, we've conquered more bile. Oh no! I wish the AI wouldn't do that. He went through enemy territory that would uh, hurt our relations with the uh, neighboring faction, the neutral faction. No, don't go through enemy territory, please. I wish there was a way to tell the AI not to go through enemy territory. Find any other way. No enemy territory, it was neutral territory. Don't go through neutral territory. Because you get upset in every neutral faction. Isn't that so obvious? Okay. So, since public order is uh, troublesome in Diaphlane, we'll move that general back to Diaphlane. We have that building there also that improves the experience of units. And we can recruit one more unit, um, either the Eastman Axe Warriors or the Sword Infantry, the Eastman Champions. Uh, the Axemen are cheaper, they cost a lot less, but I think it's a small unit, so they're good for breaching enemy lines, whereas the Swordsmen are good for holding your own line with more men. Anyway, so here's Zygfroda. And uh, there's no point of giving him that attack unit, the Axemen. We didn't give him the Eastman champions. We only have him down here just in case, as this campaign is in, on legendary difficulty, just in case someone tries to backstab us. I don't know how backstabbing the AI is. Although, um, since this game was uh, overseen by Lasted, and knowing Lasted, probably it's not a very backstabby AI. He doesn't like that kind of thing. But you never know. And we could still build something. We have 3,000 in the bank. Um, beach market, maybe. No. Grange, Great Hall, um, currently we get plus 20% replenishment chance, 20% maximum number of all units in recruitment pool. If we upgrade it, this will go to plus 30. Uh, that's a significant upgrade, so we'll go for that. We also get an extra unit of archers, I think, and the garrison. Uh, it will take eight game turns to be upgraded. Um, I don't know if we have eight more game turns before we finish the campaign, but we have money to burn. So, that was the end of the summer of 887 AD and the end of this episode. Thank you for watching.